When you look at the data lab technology and everything that it enables within the product, one of the foundational pieces of the data lab that we can't forget about is the application group. And the application group deals with dependencies and priority in which VMs start inside the virtual lab. Coincidentally, the application group is also used to activate the on-demand sandbox functionality. Now, to truly verify if a VM and the resulting application has properly initialized, many times you'll need a domain controller running in that virtual lab in order to verify that all the services have started properly. So this is where the application group comes in. You can specify which VMs need to start up together and in which order, and it also gives you the ability to build out different on-demand sandbox environments. So let's take a look inside the software at exactly where you configure the application group and what the settings are. Now that we're in the lab, let's explore exactly what makes up an application group and why you need one. So the first step is locating where you do this configuration and you're going to find that under the backup infrastructure section, locate the shore backup section. And then below that, you'll see the application group listed as a sub tab. Now you'll also notice that it's the second option when you're looking at this sure backup section. You can technically create an application group before a virtual lab. However, it doesn't really serve you much good without the virtual lab. So typically you start at the top, you create the virtual lab first, then you build your application group, and then finally your sure backup job to call it all to action. Now in this case, what we're gonna do is navigate to the application group section. Notice we have a few of these already created. So if we just modify one and hit properties, you will be able to give it a name, whatever name you'd like. You can change the description if you need to get more specific. And under virtual machines, this is where you're gonna list out what VMs consist of this particular application group. Now, generally speaking, the application group is all around dependencies. So for an example, if you need to do a verification on a SQL or Exchange server, it's highly likely to fully verify that that application works. You're gonna need a domain controller also running inside this virtual lab. DNS, DHCP perhaps, authentication roles and such, global catalog. So without having the domain controller inside the lab, the application test would fail on many of those other dependent applications like SQL or Exchange. So for that reason, we created this construct known as the application group. Now the first thing you're gonna do when you add a VM to a group is you're gonna pick where you're pulling it from. Are you coming from backups, from replicas, or from storage snapshots? Now, if you're coming from storage snapshots, it must be on a supported SAN vendor where we've built our integration. Now, in this case, we're gonna stick from backups. Now, if I choose literally just any other machine, let's say Exchange and Domain Controller, in this case, even SharePoint, we'll add all three. Now, this is where it gets important with priority and ordering which machine comes on first. Because in this example that you see here, it wouldn't do us much good if we turned on Exchange, tried to do a test before we turned on the domain controller for global catalog reasons and authentication. So what we need to make sure we do is move the domain controller up so that we have it running and fully initialized before we try to do a test with a dependent workload like Exchange or SQL. Now further, you notice there's a few other options like role and memory. So if we hit edit on one of these, this is where you can get much more specific with what type of script test we're gonna apply once the application initializes. So in this case, you'll notice we clicked on the domain controller. I could say, well, this is a DNS server. It also hosts the global catalog. And maybe we wanna test the domain controller in non-authoritative restore mode, right? So we wanna test three different roles, so we check those boxes. And all Veeam is gonna do is run a predetermined script that we have to test those three services and roles. Now moving over, you've got startup options. And this is also very important to understand. And one great use case of the memory is let's say for an example, you've got a really large SQL virtual machine that maybe has 32 or 64, maybe even 128 gigs of RAM in production because that's what it needs to actually serve up its workload. But when you're doing a very lightweight test just to assure that everything initialized and booted up properly, 
you very rarely will need that same allocation of RAM. And quite frankly, you may not have that much excess to spare within your current infrastructure. So in this case, we could come in here and say, well, this domain controller, maybe it only needs 50% of its allocated RAM and Veeam, when we turn it on, we will turn it on with half the memory that it was previously allocated for. Okay, below you have startup times. You've got your maximum allowed boot time before we render it a failure. So we're literally gonna wait 2100 seconds in this case before Veeam is gonna say, nope, that VM failed to start. Further, once we have it running and VMware Tools in this case responds, we're gonna wait another 120 seconds for the applications to initialize before we start running those script tests that we added under the role tab, right? So in certain cases, depend on the server, you may need to increase or decrease these timeouts in order for the test to complete successfully. You know, you may have a server that just by design and by nature takes a long time for the applications to fully initialize. So unless you add enough buffer and padding, your application test may fail. So this may be a case you need to bump this up to say 300 seconds, okay? Now also notice at the bottom, you have a couple check boxes where you can say, let's consider the VM to have successfully booted when a heartbeat is present, and that's VMware Tools is responding, or a VM responds to ping on any of the network interfaces, okay? Now test scripts, you see those that we selected on the previous role tab, this is what's going to be run, these particular scripts. And if you hit edit, notice you can actually modify and do custom scripts. If you've got a custom application and you want to put in a path to a script with certain arguments, you can do that. And we do have some of these predefined out of the box like we looked at on the role tab. And lastly, you've got credentials. So if you need to modify some credentials for some of these verification tests, this is where you would modify that. Okay. Now, the other very important thing to remember is once you get the application group created, if we navigate back over to the job section under the Sure Backup job and we edit this, where you actually use the application group is when you're building a Sure Backup job. So if you give it a name, you're going to choose which virtual lab the application group is going to power on within. Then you're going to choose which application group. So in this case, we were just modifying Linux. We did not save the changes, but we were modifying within the Linux VM application group. So let's say that's the one that I want to come on. This checkbox here at the bottom is where you can leverage the on-demand sandbox functionality. Because if you do not check this box, what this means is after the sure backup job goes through and does all its verification checks, everything will be powered down after those verifications are complete. However, if you check this box, we're still going to run through all the verification checks. We're going to do the application checks. If you've got those roles selected, we're going to do heartbeat check, ping test. And once all that concludes, Veeam simply leaves those VMs running. And now you have a sandbox that you can log on to and do your testing and patching and upgrades, simulations, whatever else you might want to do in a test dev environment. Okay. The other common misconception I've seen is if you want to leverage the linked jobs option within a sure backup job, you can actually link this to existing jobs. So let's say I want to test this particular job and all the VMs that it protects as well as this one. Okay. If you did not select an application group, so let's say you just did no application group, this means that it's literally going to test only the VMs that are in these jobs sequentially, one right after the other, and you can see here at the bottom, we're going to process three concurrently. Now, what does this mean? If any of those workloads that were included in these jobs required a domain controller, authentication, global catalog, DNS, DHCP, everything that we've listed previously, they're simply going to fail because there's no domain controller running. So what's important to understand is if you need a domain controller and a few other, let's say, core workloads to always be running inside the virtual lab anytime you're doing this test, you'll still want to choose an application group. Don't leave it running. Just, you know, use it just for the test. Then you can go through and link your backup jobs because what will happen then is we'll fire up the application group first 
get those VMs running. Then we go through and do our testing. And then when we're done, everything gets shut down. Okay, so just a couple tips on how to leverage application groups. You can have several of these pre-built and that's the other thing that I would highly encourage you to do. Think about the different type of sandbox environments you may need. You may want a SQL environment where you've got all four of your SQL VMs, a domain controller, and maybe a file server. You can create an application group ahead of time, put all those VMs together, and literally just call it SQL Dev Test. So on and so forth, right? You can do the same thing for Exchange, SharePoint, any other type of workload you may have. And then whenever it's time to actually fire up a lab session for those particular workloads, you could create a matching sure backup job that just says SQL development testing or SQL dev test or SQL data lab, whatever you want to name it. And then all you do is ad hoc start it when it's time to actually use the lab. And Veeam will bring online that full virtual lab with all those workloads ready. And now you can do your testing. So it's just a couple things you can set up ahead of time proactively so that when you need that lab environment, you've already got it configured. Thanks so much for watching this video. Enjoy the rest of your day.